everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you, baby girl. I'm so hey, Tootsie friends. Welcome to our YouTube channel. And welcome back if you're returning. I'm Nikki, your favorite little sister, who's extremely nervous right now. Um, I have a clubhouse meeting in about 10 minutes. Yeah, and I've been sitting here writing and rewriting my questions or notes or topics. Um, we were asked by a friend a few months ago to speak as content creators. I'm like, one of us. Okay, cool. <sighs> Only at the time when I agreed happily. I'm still happy to agree. I'm really excited for it, but I'm just extremely nervous. Um, I thought Serena was going to be with me, but she couldn't get the day off. And I should have known because... The holiday season, she's extremely busy, but I had hoped. And now I'm about to speak by myself and I'm just extremely nervous for two reasons. One, this is just my second time ever having a speech or something of this nature without Sarita. But the first time was with people I knew or I knew most, I feel like I knew everyone prior to it. So it wasn't so bad, I wasn't so nervous. But this time, I only know one person. I don't know who else is going to be there. And the second thing is, it's on Clubhouse. So I won't be able to see the people and they won't be able to see me. So I won't be able to gauge if I'm boring them or entertaining them or, you know, just engaging them. And that makes me very, very nervous. <laughs> so we will see and this is my first time doing anything like this in particular so I don't know how it's gonna go but I'm about to write my questions or my topics and I was gonna think Nikki you procrastinated 10 minutes before listen technically yes I did but I know Nikki okay and I was thinking five topics would be good to optimize as much as my hour I don't know, I was going to be talking by myself for an hour. I thought it was going to be like Sarita and then other content people. I don't know, I had an hour slot to fill. Um, so I think five topics and then I can ramble for as long and still ask questions at the end. Um, hopefully I get questions. Also, for one, it will help optimize the time, but also because then you're actually engaged and you want to hear what I have to say. Um, I feel like that'll be a good way to gauge if I bored everyone for however long or if I actually pulled them in. Um, I also hate my voice, so they're only going to be getting that. And I'm so, so sorry for them for that. I couldn't control it. <laughs> I'm nervous, you guys, but it's okay, you know. It's okay. Um, I'm in one of my favorite crew necks. I'm comfortable at home. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I'm going to write down my questions or my topics and then I'm just going to wait until it's time to log in. So, number one, backstory. So, how we, the reason we started. Number two, getting started. Number three, making connections. Um, four, branding. Five, setting goals. Okay, this is all I got for now. Um, we'll be back when it's time. I'm probably going to go throw up. I'll be back. <laughs> Send help. is trying to live her best bookish influencer life. So I know she's also excited about this. So 
you are in good company. Oh, thank you. Um, so hello, I'm Nikki of Sip Then Read. Um, Sip Then Read is something that was created by my sister and I. Um, so we Wait, just- hold on, give me two seconds. I'm gonna read your bio, hold on. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Hold on, let me pin your link. Do we want to wait one minute? That, yeah, I think some more people are coming in. All right. So, um, that'll give me time to get that. Wait, hold on. Okay. I'm going to get a better link. <laughs> get a better link. Yeah, I've neglected Instagram like forever. It's just one of those things I felt like I need to post on, but like right now I'm actually trying to grow it. So, I'm super excited about this. And we have Anita back and Dandy. Hello. Hey, y'all. Hello. Hello. Judy Ann, when you are ready, do you want to introduce the, the room and the club? And then I will do the intro. Sure, thanks. Well, welcome, everyone. And Nikki, we're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for for being with us today and sharing your experience and knowledge and, and everything and your thoughts and your time. Um, yep, welcome to Morning Muse, the creative juice bar home of the Morning Muse. We meet five days a week in the morning um, at uh, for about an hour starting at eight o'clock Eastern time. And we do writing sprints. We do writing exercises. We read our writing to one another and we um, discuss writing. So uh, that's that we nurture ourselves. We nurture um, each other and support each other. And um, so it's really about writing and about community. Um, we also meet a couple of evenings of the week we uh, meet every day in the or we have rooms open for writing sprints every day of the week as well and midday uh, some folks meet on the weekends <laughs> and then we have these writing retreats uh, three times a year we've been doing this since August of 2021 so this is our eighth writing retreat and one of those was even in person so um, it's been a, a really fun and nurturing journey, and it's continuing. Um, and there, I think, uh, anyone want to add anything else? No one wants to add. And if not, Liz, uh, Liz <laughs> I'm looking at your name. <laughs> Liz, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> Certainly. All right. And so um, for those welcome here in, in the listening lounge, if you have questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and so we have our wonderful guest speaker, Nikki, who is part of Sip and Read. Sip and Read are a classy and sassy duo expanding their love and culture towards books, creative cocktails and black authors. The live book reviews are delivered from the two different views and their tagline is everyone's favorite sister. Nikki, feel free to talk as long or as as short as you need to um, and make it as conversational as we need, as you need to. Um, so we're excited to have you. Take it away. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nikki of Sift and Read. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little nervous. But um, so my sister and I had started a physical book club um i want to say in 2019 and it was just me her and my niece who was 14 at the time um and it just started off as wanting to get my niece engaged in books again and just speaking um she was a little on the shyer side so we were like okay this is going to force her out of her bubble and it did, she came alive. Um, it was a beautiful thing to see. My sister and I started reading more and getting more engaged. And then we kind of create our own little separate book club <laughs> reading romance. 
and the stories were too mature for my niece obviously and it just kind of took on a life of its own we just started devouring books and my sister was talking to a friend of hers who I guess got tired of hearing that girl yap on and on about books and she was like you know what you you should go and do this on the internet you should go talk books there and when she said that my sister came to me and we had never heard of it and it's so funny because you kind of just assume everyone knows what you know and so when we got on to Instagram the first thing we did was like okay we need a name and sip and read was born because all the other names we wanted were taken <laughs> so it was like okay sip and read and then my sister was like oh you can just make drinks to go with the books and up until that point i had never made a cocktail i had never even thought of making drinks but i was like okay little sister struggles you do what your big sister says so i was like okay cool let's do that um and that was the most thought we put into starting our channel just saying hey let's do it um the first video was a struggle because we didn't know how to record it we didn't know how long the videos can be we did absolutely no research we did no thought process we didn't even know bookstagram or book talk was a thing we just thought we was about to revolutionize <laughs> book reviews <laughs> or talking about books on the internet um but we got on we did it the first book we discussed was the hate you give by angie thomas and we got like seven review views that whole book <laughs> and that was just us rewatching ourselves um looking back now i do wish that we had done more research into what it actually was we probably would have gone a lot further and been more strategic with the way we posted um we were very consistent it was just every tuesday you got a video um and we would tag the authors it wasn't until our second book that we did that we actually got feedback from an author and she put us on her story and we thought like we were big time <laughs> um and it just kind of grew from there now being done in, now have done this for three years i do wish that we would have paid more attention um and taking it a little more seriously back then it was just we're just putting up videos it was it was a hobby kind of like reading was we just we just did it it wasn't until we went to um alexandria's house's book event the house party the first one that we met people and some of them were like oh my goodness i really and mind you by that point we were getting a little more views uh i think our followers were still like under 500 but we were getting some engagement at that point and so we were meeting people and they were like oh i really enjoy you what do you, you know tell us more about your vlog and like all these things and we're like oh we don't we don't have any of that we just got on tiktok like it, we're, we're we're not that big time um but they kind of helped us to see that the potential in sip so we got connected with someone who was going to help us with branding and that process of working with someone to create our brand because at the time we didn't have one it was just a hodgepodge of whatever um we discovered a lot about ourselves that's where our bio truly came from the sassy classy duo because when she was asking us to describe what sip is to us we really that's all we could come up with so then she's like okay well just tell me about it and we were like we like romance books um the only requirement for us is the female lead needs to be black and it kind of grew from there um after getting our branding and getting our brand colors and our brand fonts like we shifted to taking it more seriously partly because we paid for this branding <laughs> and partly because the person we worked with um Aquarius Designs really helped us to 
see the vision. It helped us to get focused. It helped us to see that we're more than just two sisters talking to a camera. Um, there are people seeing us, there are people hearing us, there are people that we are engaging with. And it just, it really helped us grow um, in our own mindset. And it gave our page a more uniform and organized look. So after the branding, we continue to make videos and, you know, engage with authors. At that point, we started doing author interviews. Um, and that just is like the funnest thing ever, because when you're reading a book, you, you know what you got out of it, but to hear what the author intended or the author's thoughts, or for the author to be like, wow, I never even considered that when I wrote that scene. It just, it really brings the book alive for me. Um, but truly anytime I can engage with an author about their work is just, it, it elevates the story. So I really enjoyed that aspect of our growth, getting to meet the author and we started meeting other people. Um, and not just them coming on our, our posts and then us coming on their posts. Like it became us talking in the DMs and then it became, here's my number, let's just talk. And we've made so many good connections. We've met so many amazing individuals who are so brilliant and so talented and conquer the same thing we do, but in a completely different way. It has been just the most awesome thing, meeting people and making connections. And those people want to help you grow. They want to repost. They want to learn from you. They want to teach you things. The community is so big and vast and beautiful. And I just, I, I love the book community. Um, but so after the branding, we started to grow and going to more book events and meeting more authors and meeting more people. Um, but I feel like at that point, we still, we were serious, but we weren't taking ourselves serious. Um, so I still feel like we were sleeping on ourselves a little bit. Um, but the beginning of this, so I guess the end of last year, we had started a YouTube channel. And at that point, we're like, you know what? We're serious about this. Like, SIP has taken on such a life of its own that we're now creating content that's not just videos. We're vlogging, we're creating static posts, you know, we're we're truly trying to engage our audience in a new way that when we completely different than when we first started. It was no longer just a hobby, like SIP is taking over our lives at this point. <laughs> it's all we do. So we're like, okay, this. This could be something. And this year, I feel like is the first time we've actually moved towards trying to make Sip Then Read into a business. Um, we're not there yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, we ain't getting paid, y'all. <laughs> but we see the potential in what Sip Then Read can be. We see the potential in the book community in connecting with authors, connecting with other readers, connecting with people who don't read, but are like, whoa, that's an interesting thing. What do you do? Like, you would be surprised with how many people when we're like, oh, we read, that they turn their nose up or that they just don't get it. But then you meet someone who does and it's just like, oh my goodness, what are you reading? So to be able to meet someone who, like Liz, for example, when we met, it was over a book discussion, obviously, <laughs> but she doesn't normally read the same things that I read. So it's fun to meet people that read and don't read like you. Oh, so, but what are you reading? Oh, what do you get out of it? Like to be able to talk books is literally the most fun thing to me. So to be a part of this community and to be a bookstagrammer, or book blogger rather, um, it's fun. It's fun to introduce people to new books, to new authors, for an author to get in the DMs and be like, hey, I didn't even know you knew me. And I'm like, you know who I am? 
that's what's actually interesting, you know? So it's just, it's a fun, fun thing. Um, I love you here and I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll use that pause as an opportunity for a question if you if you would like one. Oh, yes, please. I can use them. <laughs> <laughs> so one, I think your journey is absolutely amazing. And to see how far you've come in three years is just super big. Thank you. But my question is kind of like as an author, right? So mm -hmm. like, what should an author know when approaching a book blogger, right? So like, I have a romantic fantasy coming out. And so like, if I wanted to be like, hey, like, can you promote this or arc read, you know, mm -hmm. can I get some arc readers from your group? What does that look like? And hint, hint, do you charge for that? <laughs> we do not charge for that. <laughs> um, so everyone kind of has their own process and way of doing it or accepting books. Some people have like Google forms, but I feel like those are um, like bigger platforms where it's just easier to have a separate place. But most book bloggers are fine with you getting in their DMs and asking if they're willing to do it. That's how we get most of ours, by just authors hopping in. Um, I would be happy to read that. I happen to love fantasy books, by the way. But um, yeah, just hopping into the DMs. You could also put out a post just asking um, who would be interested. You can do a TikTok video describing your book a little bit and say you're looking for ARC readers, check out my link in uh, my bio to for fill out the form. There's a lot of ways to do it. And most readers, if what you're putting out interests them, they're going to jump on. Sometimes you don't even have to seek out bloggers. I do recommend seeking out bloggers just because people do look to them for book recommendations. But if you put out a video or put out a post describing your book, and saying, hey, I'm looking for readers or looking for ARC reviewers or I'm looking for someone to do a cover reveal, people will come. I don't know if I'm sit coming from just a book blogger standpoint because if I see that and it's something that I'm interested in, I'm going to ask. So I just think putting yourself out there really helps and getting in the DMs definitely helps. Are there any other questions? <laughs> I'm too busy DMing her right now, so. <laughs> oh, you would love her Regina Grant um, um, novels, um, Nikki. Absolutely. <laughs> I will check them out. Thank you. Also, can I just say, I love that you guys do this, like, together. That is so amazing. To build each other up is so important, but also to get the real-time feedback. I just think that is the dopest thing you guys y'all y'all got it figured out i love that woot woot and judy and i saw you wanted to say something yeah i had uh one question i am wondering um sort of following from liz's question your your response have do you have any stories or any funny or interesting ways that authors have reached out to you that either were like oh that's really cool or oh my gosh people don't do that <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i will say there's been times where i can tell the author just saw like book blogger in our um thing and like just copied and pasted a like a thing to come read because obviously if you know sip then read you know it's two people so it'll be singular. So I'm like, okay, you don't actually follow us. And then I do go to, cause so in the beginning, if an author approached, I was like, yes, sure. Okay, cool. Drop everything. But now we're actually very busy with making content and other and working with authors. So I do take the extra step to see, is this person following, following us? Okay, they're not what was it about us that they wanted to copy and paste this inquiry so i'll go down their page and it won't even be something that we normally would promote so i'm i just kind of ignored those requests because you don't really want to work with us you just want us to promote you um and which i don't mind 
but just say that. I don't need the flowery words. And that's a personal thing. I don't feel like that's the case for all bloggers. But for me, just let's be a hundred with each other. I'm, I'm, it's really hard for me as a book blogger because I'm a mood reader. So I might see like, for example, no offense Liz, <laughs> but I might see Liz's post for her fantasy book and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna jump on that. I wanna read it. And then I'm like, hey Liz, give me that arc. And she's like, cool. And then I don't get the arc for two weeks. And it's like, okay, this book comes out next week. That's not enough time for me to sit down and read Liz's book because I'm also reading other books that I already made commitments to. So for authors that are just like copying and pasting, I want to work with you, it doesn't make me want to work with them. If I'm going to take my time or put down something that I was already reading to hurry up and get this ARC review out, I want to know that you were actually building something. You're not just trying to use my platform and me by extension. Um, that's another gripe I have. <laughs> Sorry. But when... No, that's good. Keep going. What else makes grinder do? <laughs> when an arc is coming, I feel like authors don't always give enough time to bloggers to get the to put the book out the way they would want because it's like you have to read the book and now you have to construct a book review so to only give me a week is not enough time because if i'm just reading this book then yeah sure but we're book bloggers we're reading tons of books at one time so i personally would like two to three weeks for a proper arc review i don't know how I don't know the writing process in that extent to know how easy or hard that is of when your book is complete to when you're trying to put it out. But I do recommend a little more time given to book bloggers if you want a proper ARC review. Um, and then funny stories, I don't really have too many. I think I just get kind of my mind blown anytime an author asks for a review from us because I'm just like you want me oh my goodness so um that's always a good feeling even though now unfortunately we can't accept all of the reviews and inquiries we get um just for timing or again if they need it by a certain point and we just can't deliver that because of whatever reason um I mean, but I do feel like just hopping in the DMs is fine. Unless they tell you like, oh, I have a Google form. Usually they want your books. Like any new book, you're the first one talking about it. That's a major thing. But, you know, I would just check into their DMs. If they have another way of doing it, they'll tell you to go here and do it there. Any other questions? Good, because good, I'm in your DMs right oh. now. <laughs> I just Thank know you. I'm a friend of Liz, so good. <laughs> oh, we're all about the sisterhood. The, the treatment oh, my... is always good. <laughs> uh, that's excellent. Um, we, I'm so glad I'm catching you on the way up. You know? <laughs> um, do you do reviews of books that are already out there or just new releases? Oh, we do reviews on everything. Um, I feel like we're pretty lax, honestly about it the only requirement again is that the female lead be black it doesn't matter if it's a romance or anything we just kind of like to identify with the characters but that's not to say we wouldn't read other things on um maybe youtube or something but for the most part our instagram and tiktok is solely books that have black women so that's the only requirement we'll read anything no matter how new or old the um story is and that's just for us. Um, I'm sure there's other bloggers out there that really don't mind either way. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So you have a really engaging and really engaged Facebook group. You know, oh, thank you. or you know, what yeah, like what what why do you think that is? Like what can authors or other, you know, people trying to have a book blog do to have like an engaged following, if that makes sense? Yes, um, thank you, because we feel like we're really struggling on Facebook. <laughs> so thank you. We're still learning um, our Facebook group. 
but to have an engaged following i think something that we struggled with when we first started it wasn't that we weren't being ourselves but we were so like stiff and didn't know if this was okay or if that was okay is this going to turn someone off is that not going to turn them off and i don't know at what point we shifted to we don't really care <laughs> you're either going to like us and support us or you're not but i think just being genuinely yourself brings genuine engagement um you guys probably haven't caught any of our things but my sister pretty says pretty off the wall things and that i feel like draws a crowd she is a wild card <laughs> so people tend to like that but i think just being genuine is always going to bring the crowd um it might take some time to find your people but your people will find you and because they're your people they're going to engage and then you're going to engage back i think the engaging back is what's important as a reader there's authors that like i feel like are my friends there's authors that i feel like are work buddies and then there's authors that i'm like oh i just enjoy their work because there's no personal connection so for me i really enjoy the authors that take the time to engage with the readers that take the time to comment under a comment that the person made on their post to you know go as far as to post on facebook and show their personality show who they are i feel like that is kind of what is going to draw engagement and draw the crowd um with me and sarita we have gotten comments at book events like wow you're really like that huh and it was not always a compliment <laughs> i can tell in their tone but they can't say that they didn't get us no matter what situation it is and I feel like that's what brings engagement feeling like you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me or Sarita is what pulls you in it makes you want to engage in my opinion um comment oh okay um Soda can I ask you a question Or is that not allowed? She might be taking. <laughs> no, you can ask. She's got a kid. She might be running oh, after. Her right okay. Now. Okay. Well, I did want to ask her a question if she comes back. <laughs> Are there any Karen, other questions? Welcome to the stage. Yes. Um. Tell me about the playlist and how that. I went to the bathroom for a minute, so I might have missed it. But tell me. Uh, I see you've got the 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 playlist. And where is winter? Because it's December now. But, oh, <laughs> uh, I'd love to hear about that. So um, our reviews are kind of... Okay, so my sister's also extremely extra, y'all. So uh, for the very first um, book review that an author asked us, like gifted us the book to review, we wanted to do something special and it was a historical fiction and interracial story and so like we got dressed up in olden days and we made the video black and white like it was a whole moment okay it was extremely fun the story was really good and so that was a book review that i'm like okay i'm going to i'm gonna go all out for this book review and i kind of did if the character was this then if so it was like um Victor was her name and I was like if being a lady was a, a person it'd be Victor and so that's kind of how our book reviews got started because my sister loved it and was like okay we're always gonna do that and our reviews will always be paired with a drink because you know sip and read and so then she was like oh and we can pair it with a song so we'll let's read your book pair it with a drink like for that one I believe it was like an old-fashioned or something like that and then you get it paired with a song or two and it'll be like okay if you listen to this song it's gonna put you in the mindset of this book and so leading from there with our newsletter we like to create playlists to go along with the newsletter and the theme of the month and music is just kind of really integrated integrated that is not integrated. the word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> integrated into our themes. So that's where the music playlist come from. And you are absolutely right. We have not done December yet. 
we're actually doing booksmiths on christmas so everything else is just falling to the wayside so thank you for the reminder we need to put out our winter playlist but that's kind of where it came from we pair our books with a song and a drink so so i this is just fascinating to me um thank you. and i i want to tell you that i want my my best friend makes mocktails oh nice so, if you ever, and she makes cuss like she designs, she puts pea flour in them, whatever, and they turn like purple when mm -hmm. you add the lemon juice and stuff. Yes. So it would be great. I should connect you two because you could have like an alcoholic drink and then like a mocktail drink. Oh, the, yes, please. For the straight edges. Yes, I'm still trying to learn. Okay. I'm highly, highly on the amateur <laughs> bartending. <laughs> highly leaning towards amateur so i love to follow and support anyone that makes drinks to get inspiration so i would truly appreciate that thank you any other questions soda are you back i mean i could keep talking if y'all need me to. <laughs> so Karen, I, I, do you I, have a oh, sorry oh sorry i was just gonna ask so you say you're trying to take this show full time, you know, make it make money for you. Yes, ma'am. Make it make it earn. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the growth edges are? Like, what do you want to extend into? Um. So right now we're moving more on YouTube, more into lifestyle as well. So hopefully working with brands, um, alcoholic brands, making drinks and things. Um. I don't see us charging for like book reviews or things like that. Just because that's just not something that I see us doing, um, at least not right now. We want to work with authors. We want to put their work out there. I think the um, issue for us is finding the a creative way to make money from it without do having to charge authors for it. Because we mostly work with indie authors and creating and promoting a book is expensive enough and honestly we're probably going to read it regardless if it comes across our minds our platform whatever however it comes across um we're probably going to read it anyway so i don't see charging that way that's kind of what we're trying to figure out where we can pull in money from it um i have a question when you talk pulling in money from it have you looked on tiktok where you can um, do the like affiliate links to people's books that you talk about who have TikTok shop. Um, I have not seen that. <laughs> I'm really bad at TikTok. Um, I'm gonna have to look into that. Thank you. Okay. Um. Hi, I'm Karen. Hello, Karen. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> I came here accidentally, and then I was <laughs> like, maybe you should stay and pay attention. So. I've been paying attention. By the way, this is my um, government name. My author name is KT Bond. Oh, um, okay. Uh, and I just, I, I hear what Unique has to say about not wanting to be used by authors. I get that. <laughs> I totally get that. I'm just, I didn't know anything about this uh, program and I'm just interested. I want to know how I can get to know you better. Mm -hmm. Um and you know what i can do to, to ensure that we have more than a sort of impersonal relationship um maybe there are books that you've read that i want to read that i don't know because obviously i'm trying to write and um you know so i just i just wanted to say hello to introduce myself to you to say i'm very interested in getting to know you more and since you mentioned TikTok, i'm currently <laughs> cutting my teeth on tiktok and trying to do things once a day to have people come to my page oh good for you just to you know see me and mm -hmm. most of the stuff that i do is not book related because i believe i heard somewhere recently that you don't want it always to be by me by my book um so i tell them about my day i take them on walks with my dog oh, i that's do the nice. silly i do the silly you know those filter things mm -hmm. um I, I do stuff like that. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, I had to take my daughter to the emergency room. I did a, pic, a video about that. So so I am trying to make TikTok into a place where people can see me as a human being mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not just as Katie Bond who writes stories they may or may not like. Right. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say hi, introduce myself to this group. 
I don't think I'm in it, so I'm going to have to join. <laughs> Um, and I have to go. That's why I wanted to stay and say hi before I left. So Hello. if you see me leaving, it's not because I'm not interested. It's because I got to go. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just put my, I'm just going to put the author name in the chat. So if you guys are interested, you can um, come. I'm on Facebook as well because oh. TikTok and Facebook are currently where I'm trying to make my, um, oh, Jesus. I'm. Can you tell that I've lost my mind? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it said KT, but it doesn't say Bond. Apparently, I cannot multitask. Who knew? Mother of four, and I can't multitask. That is funny. I will okay, definitely keep an go. eye out for you. Thank you. And so I will do. I will contact you. I'll find a way to contact you. I promise. Yes. Um. It's um, sipped and read on all of our platforms, but I will definitely uh, reach out. And if you you can if you find me on on facebook or on i'm also on amazon that's where all my books are okay um you can contact me that way and just remind me of where we met um life is really crazy right now but i I'm hear doing that my very best i'm doing my best to be an adult you don't get to be 65 and act like you're a child right so <laughs> that's what i hear <laughs> yeah trust me it's true believe me <laughs> <laughs> all right guys it was so nice to hang out with you all and to be here and i promise the next time if I, if I get notified, because sometimes I don't get the notifications, I will come by again. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You too. Take care. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for coming. Um, that was nice. Did you guys want to talk about TikTok? Um, yes, please. Because um, I think Karen is correct. Um, I feel like a good 50-50 as far as book content and then 50-50 of life because as a reader, it's nice to get to know the authors of some of the books you love. Um, but I do think that there's a way to promote your book without it feeling like, oh, you're just trying to get me to buy it. Um, I love when authors will like read a snippet of their book that they think will really interest the reader or I've also seen authors that will like kind of tell you the beginning of the story kind of like oh she walked into the bar and there was a man gazing at her and they locked eyes and then what happened you'll have to read this book to find out <laughs> I really really love those it speaks to the reader in me um and then even just you don't even have to read a snippet posting like a quote from the book are really eye-catching and then also doing um like pictures from your books not necessarily pictures so there are pictures that represent scenes from your book that you think would draw the attention of the reader so like for a fantasy maybe um, if I were to see vampires, werewolves, or anything of that nature, it's going to draw my attention. I love to read about vampires, werewolves. I haven't read too many books about fairies. So maybe seeing some fairies or something like done cool in a cool way would draw my attention. But there's certain ways to pull out readers without it feeling like you're just trying to sell me something. You could just be posting about your book. It doesn't have to feel like you're just only want to talk when you're pushing your book. But I do think it's great to also see like someone walking their dog. Oh, they have a dog. I have a dog. We're dog people. That's bonding. That's good to know. And also you got to check out uh, Danny Williams, Danielle. She has a whole series on like vampires and all of that jazz and they are black woman led. Oh, and they are sassy and strong. <laughs> they don't take no mess. Say less. I am there. I I love a good vampire story. Also, I know this is more on a pricier thing, but putting books on audio put you in front of a whole new um, audience. There are some people that exclusively only read audiobooks. Uh, my sister, for example, 90% of her books are audiobooks. Um, she's dyslexic. So audiobooks are just how she gets her reading done. She will read like 
physical books and things of that nature. She's actually has a whole annotating series on our YouTube. But audiobooks put you in front of a whole new audience. I know they are pricey, but there are grants and scholarships available nowadays. Um, it's just something to think about if it's something that you're interested in and something that you would like to do in the future. There are grants for those things. I do recommend if it's something that's possible to try and get your book on audio. Because even just someone who might who's a hybrid reader, audio and books, physical books or ebooks, they might go to the rest of your catalog because they enjoyed this one book on audio. Sorry, Liz, were you gonna say something? Uh two things. One uh, my first audiobook is coming out February 14th. Yay! The one I'm on <laughs> so I'll, I'll chat with you. Yes! And then, um, what's the other thing? You were saying something, and I... Oh, what about AI audiobooks? Like, what are you seeing from the reader's perspective? Do they care? Do they not mind if an author or any author uses AI narration? Kind of, what is your take on that? Okay, so... Ah, I haven't listened to them. I actually, I avoid them. But it's more of a morally standing kind of thing. Um, I think you can tell. There, okay, so there's audiobooks and then there's good audiobooks. And yes, it's important to get your book on audio if it's possible. But... This is your baby. You should put it in the hands of someone who's going to treat it properly. A good narrator can take a book to new levels. A bad narrator can take a good book down. And I feel like you're investing so much money into your audiobook. It's a shame for people to ignore it because it's AI or it's a horrible narrator. It's just there's narrators that I'm like, oop, I do not like their voice and I'm going to keep scrolling and not even read the description of the book because I know I don't like this person. Now, if it's by an author that I know I enjoy and she got a narrator I don't like, I'm just going to physically read the book. I'm not going to listen to the audio, which is unfortunate because audiobooks are expensive. I realize that, which is why I highly recommend ladies looking for the grants and the scholarships because they are out there. I've, we've interviewed a few authors that have gotten their audiobooks on because of grants. Um, but yes, I don't recommend that AI, me personally. But again, that's more because I haven't seen it done night good yet. And because I feel like I give the job to a person. But I understand those are expensive. Or that's the expensive route. My first Regina Grant cozy mystery. I did the a. I did the narration myself. I took audio audio narration, voice acting crash course, and and did that, and it was a lot of fun. You have a nice voice though, so I could see it being very successful for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, concerns, anything I can help with as a reader? Have you thought about um, doing paid reader groups if you don't want to choose to charge the authors? Paid reader like groups? Like giving them some kind of experience? Um, so in the beginning, we thought a lot about that. Um, I don't know how we would make that work. Um, I don't know. I think it's also like us just not being good, like taker of things. <laughs> um, that's something we're trying to work on. We are notorious for an author like, hey, let me give you this. And we're like, oh, no, it's OK. We'll pay for it. <laughs> um, so I think it's just not fully being comfortable yet charging. Um, it's easier, I feel like, if. I don't know, Jack Daniels or something is like, hey, let's sponsor your video. Cool. I don't, I think that that's something that we need to figure out a good balance on. 
of being comfortable of what to charge people and when. But I never actually considered a reading group that way. Um, we, in the beginning, thought of doing like a Patreon. Uh, but I don't know. I, I guess it's just trying to find the balance and figuring out how to charge for something that a lot of people do for free. I mean, they don't do it like Sip do it, but they are doing it for free. It's just about finding a balance, I guess. Thank you. That's a good suggestion, though. Any other questions, concerns? I'm so sorry, Liz. I am not good at this. You are doing fantastic. This is why I need my sister. She's the one that's going to run her mouth all day. No, you are doing fantastic. I think Rack is... I had a question. Poet. Oh, yeah. hello. Yes, hello. Um, would you... Um, uh, it just slipped my mind. What was I going to say? Uh, well, the first question was... Would you always keep the same gender as the author when you're looking for a voiceover, not voiceover, but, you know, a, a, a voice actor for the audiobook? No. So there's audiobooks that are just one narrator. Um, it is more fun when there's two, like a voice per point of view. But I have had read some very, very good Audi award winning narration level of of books where it's just one narrator i think it's just about finding the right narrator that can have a good male or female voice i, I see you're saying I mean, if you treat it kind of like a teleplay or something yes it just kind of brings it to life more yeah i could certainly see that I, i'd imagine that would be a little bit more cost prohibitive but uh yeah, but there are good narrators that can do two voices. Uh, Wesley Savon is really good. Jacoby Diem. Mind you, these are like more higher up than the narrating world. But they right. they are very good narrators. Um, Winston James. Tree Taylor has a good one. E. Kane. That woman is a whole... There's like a bazillion people in her head. She does a really good. She can narrate a story... And I'll see her name. I'm going to get the book regardless because I know she can narrate really, really well. Um, but there are very good voice actors out there that can do dual voices. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious what you thought about that. Yes, I don't mind it. Um, it is always fun when there's a certain voice for each character, but it's not necessary at all. If you get a good narrator, it does they can handle one book by themselves. So when you go to in-person book events, mm -hmm. um, what are you doing exactly? Um, so for us, we are recording, um, recounting the experience for our readers who couldn't make it, meeting, taking pictures with the authors, buying books. You know, it's just, I feel like it's a great way to network. Um to be able to be in front of someone who wrote a book that you enjoyed is a whole other experience. I feel like it it truly bonds you. It truly takes it to a personalized relationship. Now it's like, I've seen you face to face, we're friends. I'm gonna support you no matter what. <laughs> At least that's how it is for me. Um, there's just something about being able to hug and not just the author, other readers, especially people that you've talked to on the internet, even some people who you might not have physically talked to, but they know you or you know them from another post or something. It it really just personalizes the experience. And authors make really good money during, um, during book events. People tend to be willing to try new authors as well because now the person is physically in front of you, you're seeing their books, and it might just be because you've never came across them. They were never in your suggestions, never in your recommended. Now you're seeing them. You're seeing their book covers. A book cover is a game changer. I don't care if I've never heard of this person. If your book cover catches my eye, I'm going for it. A book, a good book cover, do not underestimate. 
Yeah, I can say that I, I was, I've been to the D.C. book fair before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I used to think, when I lived in D.C., I used to take my kids. Oh, and that's they nice. definitely um, identified more. They, they were into the Diary of the Wimpy Kid, you know. The oh, yes, yes. And, and they had the author there. And so while we were standing in line, exactly like you said, the kids are talking to all the other kids who were into the Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Mm-hmm. So the, the line wasn't even a line experience. It was more like a community experience. Yes. And me and the author, you know, drove them to be like crazy about that series afterwards. Yes. So it definitely, you know, I definitely saw that in in real time, and uh, and then my wife and I got to meet Diana Gal. Gal- How do you say her name? G- Gabaldon, G- the out the Outlander lady. Oh, my sister loves that series. Yeah, she was there and super super nice and uh, and funny. What was her name? Gabaldon. Uh, I'm not sure of her, her name, name but, but yes, my sister Gabaldon, um, loves that series. She's also really into historical fictions and um, fantasy. So like it was all the things she loves in one. She absolutely loves, is, adores that series. And that's someone she came across because of obviously audiobooks from Game of Thrones. She's kind of a geek. Oh, oh cool. <laughs> oh yeah, no, uh, she yeah. loves all that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm just, I guess I'm just reinforcing what you said from my own experience that, that, that is, it definitely personalizes it and makes it more more important. You know, after that, we were definitely sure. getting all the Outlander books. For sure. No, it, it really does. It just brings it to life. And there's something about being in a space with like-mind people. Other people who love to read. Other people that, you know, get a high from getting a new book. From getting to meet the author. It's not the same person as someone who just leisurely reads. Like, if you're going to a book event, you're there with a purpose, and it's usually to meet the author. So to be around other people who want to meet the author, who want to meet other readers, it's just, it's a good time. It's a good time. I thoroughly enjoy it and highly recommend, if possible, for authors to experience going to a book event. I will also say y'all are a good time. Um, Again, like, fell in love with you and your sister's brand you know during that that author interview you all are just very authentic you Thank really you. just feel like you are one of the sisters it, it really is something special that you have and i can't wait to see it grow please let us know if there's anything that we can do to support y'all as well thank you so much i truly appreciate that um we're just we're just being us and it's it's easy doing it with your sister, but it's also like a scary thing putting yourself out there. I feel like we're kind of over that hurdle, but I think that's the biggest thing as far as for you guys, I think just put your stuff out there. Like readers are going to flock to it. Just put it out there. The thing for me is we were actually uh, talking about this the other day, Sri and I like, How do you know if it's a new author or if it's just a new to you author? It's hard to tell, but it's nice to come across a new author. And most of the authors, new authors I come across is through TikTok or Instagram because, well, mostly through TikTok. Instagram kind of only filters in the people that I already am introduced to. I might come across someone new here and there, but TikTok, I definitely always is coming across new authors because they're posting their books. And again, it's not in a way where it's like, hey, come read my book. It's just telling me about the book and that interests me. It's saying, hey, I'm looking for ARC readers. That interests me. So I think the biggest thing is just putting yourself out there, taking that leap of faith, which I feel like you guys already did. It's being a writer, y'all are real artists. That's major. So I would also let us know if there's anything that we can do to help. We, our goal is always to build up. Any other questions? I just feel like there's a real opportunity for you to connect authors with readers in a way that they don't normally get to experience them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad you're there. Thank you. Like, 
for I would I would consider paying for being a member of a group that I was going to get to read the book and you know do a Zoom together to discuss and the author was going to be there commenting and you know stuff like that and I imagine authors would love that as well so that is something to consider thank you so much. That is definitely something to consider. I, y'all got me feeling myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. Again, you know, Nikki, we thank you so very much. I know we're almost at the top of the hour, and I'm going to steal uh, a question that Yudi Ann asked um, the last time. What's the dream? Like, what what do you hope will this will turn into? Um, so the goal is to just be able to quit our day jobs and just be able to read all day and make content. <laughs> um, we don't have um, that big of a following right now on Instagram. We're like over 2000 on Instagram and TikTok. Um, our YouTube, we started last year. So we have a little over 200 followers um, or subscribers. I mean, um, I think the goal is just to grow. I I want to continue to read and push indie books. Like I don't have anything against traditionally published books. I will gladly read them and support them. But for me, I would love to be a huge support and backing for indie authors. Because if anything I've learned in the three years of doing this is how difficult it is to write just naturally write a book and put it out there but also to promote it especially if you don't know how to promote it if you don't know how to catch the eye of someone new if you don't know how to catch the eye of someone who's been in the game I would just really love to be a hub for indie authors where they could come and get their book put out there for readers that's my goal I'm not really sure of what Sarita's goal is but for me, I just, I really want to support indie authors. Well, listen, you have my, you have a <laughs> copy of my books anytime. I have DM'd you and I look forward to following up. Yes, um, I will definitely message you after. Thank you so much. I want to put a quick call out. We've messaged Soda. Soda, calling Soda. Are you there? Sounds like we're at a seance. <laughs> we're calling soda. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I was just curious because Liz had said that she's trying to get into, or she was saying she was trying to get more on Instagram. I was just curious where she, if she did most of her stuff on TikTok or where she posted most of her reviews. But I'm sure I can link with her another time. I was just curious. I know she's been posting a lot on TikTok. I don't know if she's done like review specific, mm -hmm. but definitely we'll make sure she connects with you and vice versa. Yes, I would appreciate that. Anything else I, I can help I with? I definitely will take your suggestion of looking at TikTok. Oh, yes. It's a good place to find readers and authors um tiktok is there's a lot of drama and mess over there but it's a great hub yeah. to get books and okay. new books i'm not familiar i'm on instagram mostly in in clubhouse and youtube but not mm -hmm. i haven't really done anything with tiktok but but just the fact that when i came in this room and, and you suggested jack daniels as a, a sponsor <laughs> I, knew I was in the right place <laughs> so i'm taking the rest of your suggestions to heart Thank you. But yes, TikTok is a great place to um, promote or find books. It grows every day. There's always new TikTok, book talk people coming on. It's a great hub. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not on there too often. I mostly focus also on Instagram and now YouTube. But TikTok, it's not going anywhere. It's always going to grow. And I feel like TikTok is less aesthetic-y. You just kind of come as you are, and that's okay. I feel like Instagram, you kind of have to come a little cute. But TikTok, you come as you are, you post what you want, and you call it a day. 
TikTok is definitely, um, I feel like, easier to grow an audience from because they will constantly just push anything out there in a way that Instagram does not. Um, I hope that helped, Liz. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do not apologize. You have been amazing. I, I know I feel inspired. Um, it's great hearing from a reader. You know, we always talk to authors and the business, and so just hearing how excited you are about books, it just reminds you, like, just reading is fun. Writing is fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know? And so to keep it fun. And so, listen, please don't be a stranger. Come on back. For sure. Now I have Clubhouse. I'm with the cool kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any final questions, comments, concerns, anything else before we close out the room? All right. Again, All right. for the replay. Oh, go ahead, Judy Ann. Oh, nope. I was just going to say thank you again, Nikki, so much. Yeah. Thank you for it. having me. I truly appreciate you guys. Oh, likewise. Thank you. Well, your last comment actually spurred a question, if you don't mind. No, uh, no, no. Uh, you said that writing is fun. I actually don't find the act of writing fun. I find it to be a compulsion. But I, I, I like the. I have a great sense of fulfillment after I'm done. So I'm not sure if anybody else. You know, I find the act is is a little bit torturous at times. Wow. So I'm not sure if anybody else feels that way, but uh, but I, I I I thoroughly am fulfilled when I'm done with a, pro a project, some writing project. What kind of stories do you write? Uh, I have some short stories. They're based in uh, uh, basically combat experiences. Mm. And I have a, 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 I'm a, a, about a fourth of the way through a novel. Um, so uh, it's just a, a contemporary drama. Oh, nice. And uh, not, nothing. Uh, though it's funny, I have a friend who's a Hugo Award winning uh, book book uh, book artist. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah, I went to high school with him. I used to watch him draw in class. And now he's won two Hugo Awards. He did the art for George R. R. Martin's. Oh, uh, wow. You know, yeah, John Picasso. He's a he's pretty big time. Yeah. He's, he's, he knows he's going to write a book and he's uh, he's, you know, he's offered to do it but it's not really his thing you know I, I don't know what he would do right i guess i leave it up to him he's creative enough to figure it out but usually he does sci-fi and fantasy mm -hmm. so you know he does pretty uh pretty cool but you know rather outlandish stuff i'm not sure what he'd come up with but i guess i'll, I'll just for the name factor alone i think i'll take him up on it yes i definitely think you should and i think um fantasy is such a whimsical thing that it he'll probably have something really cool for realistic because again whimsical you have to get creative like real life i think he'll come up with something really dope and again just the notoriety you say you had someone that did george rr R. martin they're going to come in flock highly highly recommend you take him up on his offer and that's just as a reader standpoint yeah no i saw in for i was at uh comic-con uh, well, the Balticon, you know, the one in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and uh, he was he was there with George, and I got to meet him, and uh, definitely saw the. I'm I'm not a Game of Thrones person, so I, I'm a, I was vaguely aware of it. But I didn't mm -hmm. realize what a big deal it was until that time with the with the line going out the door and around the building. Oh yeah. So you know, uh, I, I certainly became aware. I was like, man, how'd you? You know, this is big time, brother. How'd you get? How'd you get mixed <laughs> up into this? But he's he's very good. So, uh, but I, I still haven't read. It's not my genre, but uh, I'm aware of the fact that it's. And my daughter tells me that I have to watch the series. But oh yeah, haven't done, haven't, haven't done that either. <laughs> I know I'm way behind the curve here. <laughs> well, I think that's the good, cool thing to do because now it's not so everywhere. But yeah, Game of Thrones is a game changer. Even if you're not really into fantasy, just the everything else <laughs> sorry let me sing something <laughs> no you're good nikki again i just wanted to say thank you we are about to head over to our hot picks room where we're yes. talking about all of the hot picks for writers things that we are loving and that's going to be led by the lovely judy ann if you want to hang you can if you have to run 
again, feel free to come on back anytime. Thank you so much. You all have a wonderful day. Perfect. Oh, and I will send you the uh, replay so you'll have the audio for this as well. Thank you so much. Making content. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. You all have a wonderful day. Yep. You too. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you, baby girl. I'm also recording for YouTube. Say hi to the fam of Love the Tipsy YouTube. Friends. You guys. Hey, Tipsy Friends. Listen. Hey, Tipsy Friends. Get drunk. Forget Tipsy. All right. Yeah. Go home. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Okay, so I didn't think well because remember I had my topics and I was going to focus on, I ended up putting it all in one because I did my notes on my iPad, as you guys saw. I also did Clubhouse on my iPad. I, I couldn't look at my notes and <laughs> be in Clubhouse. So all the topics I wanted to talk about either got forgotten or all bushed into one. It was only supposed to be like 30, 15 minutes of questions. I used my whole talk in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> and I was going to say, I, did, I got nervous. Why, Nikki? You were just talking to the people. I know, but they Your I couldn't job, see. Your job, is literally talking to people. I know, but it's like I see them. And they see me. I couldn't see them. I just heard their voices. Well, I was so confused. I thought you were, I thought it was like a voice chat situation. Or not Not just voice chat, like a Zoom situation where we see each other. I didn't know what so it was going to be. you talking into the iPad, I was like, what is she doing? <laughs> That's what she was doing. I didn't know what it was going to be, honestly, okay? I just, ugh. It hurts. I'm not good at like spontaneous things and it wasn't spontaneous because I knew what it was but oh my blue toast relations on here Lisa's on here cousin I don't know who this is no I'm just adding people be quiet there this it was fun it was fun I had a lot of fun, especially when the people started to ask questions and gave me things to talk about. Um, I was, I'm was still nervous, but it was, it went better than I thought it was going to be. Whew, y'all, that was, that was intense. I would do it again though. I, I, I feel more prepared if I'm asked again. I will have a speech over here. Not on the same place where I'm using Clubhouse. <laughs> I was wondering, what are you doing? Literally, that okay. Well, that makes but, like a lot of sense as to why it wasn't working out. Right, right, right. No, it okay. makes sense. Like you should do it again. Like it makes sense to never do it again. You know. Listen. <laughs> Go. On. I'm recording right now. I need you not to be yourself. I need you I'm to sorry. be like <laughs> away. Hello, Go home. Tipsy friends. <laughs> Keep sipping and stay tipsy. Yes. Horrible accent, first off. Second, as I was saying, thank you guys for joining me. I'm so sorry this video Later. was so long. I don't. I still don't know what day of Booksmith this is going to be. Um, I hope you guys find it interesting and engaging. Um, I can't wait to watch this back and like to see my face. <laughs> of all my expressions. Hopefully you guys actually post it. Ladera, I, <sighs> yeah, she's Ladera now, not baby girl. That's Ladera Denise. Later. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know what day of booksmith this is. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to write the words, I'm sure. I'm sorry the video was so long. Um, Hopefully you made it to the end. This was a new experience for me, but it was fun. Bye. Oh, wait. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, ring a ding, 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 ding. 
it really helps we could really use the help how are you guys feeling about our bootsmith so far um i don't know what day this is but i know that we are being consistent and that we're doing it um but today's actual date is december 2nd so this might go out the third or the fourth so maybe it'll be day four pushing for day four day three no no i think i have a video for day three pushing for day four but thank you guys so so much i appreciate you i love you all and to my silent viewers <laughs> bye guys